Right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Corsair. I think uh, we got a good uh, weave about how products are developed uh, at uh, different parts of the world and uh, what kind of development is most suitable for Sri Lanka. So uh, another uh, an another problem that uh, as uh, academics that we see in many cases is when we do our design projects or when we uh, work on work for certain uh, invent, invention uh, competitions, we see that students are coming up with uh, their own project ideas. Some of them are really good and really innovative and uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of substance into those proposals, but we also see some project ideas just uh, uh, coming out of uh, their experience of uh, available technologies, uh, but they are not really focused on uh, user requirements. Or uh, sometimes we see that students try to uh, look at the user without actually observing them. They think that this might be a solution while the user might think otherwise. So how should we tackle this problem? And when we generate a, a good uh, problem to solve, uh, how to select this kind of a problem? Uh, do you have any advice for the students in this case? Yeah, of course, it's one of the key problems in Sri Lanka product development, as I mentioned initially also, uh, that we are not developing for user requirement. We are normally, what happens is we think that, okay, this is a really fine, really good product, really good idea, let's make that. But users might not have that requirement or oh, that requirement might be too niche that you can't make any money out of it. So it's an ultimate failure. So the idea is that when you do a product development, you have to sell and earn money, regardless of anything else. That's the final idea. Whoever is manufacturing this product is spending a huge amount of money on manufacturing, marketing, and putting the effort on this one. And they want to earn money. If you don't develop the product into the correct market, at the correct time, at a large enough gap, you won't make money. So that's the key thing. So there are a few, few things that you have to highlight uh, in, in selecting the product. One is whether you have a market gap, which means, say, if you develop a product which is not needed by the market, it may be for an example, um, let me think about it. Uh, okay, you are developing a tractor which can run at maybe 150 kilometers per hour, a really fast tractor. It might not be needed because you are, tractor is normally used for in the, in the fields and everything, paddy fields, and they don't need a huge amount of uh, like a fast tractor because their paddy fields are very close to their home. So they are just driving one kilometer. They don't care whether it's 100 kilometers per hour or one kilometer per hour. So that's not a market requirement. You, you can like predict nice requirements, but if it is not actually needed by the user, no one will purchase that thing. That's one thing. Other one is whether there is enough gap in that market. For an example, say uh, uh, in the in the aviation industry, you have long haul flights, which is like A350 uh, Dreamliner likewise, where there's a large amount of seats available and they are running for very long distances. And there are short haul flights like uh, A320. Uh, likewise, where you have small crew, small amount of people, and it's going between closer uh, airports. And in the middle, there is a gap, which is uh, not very large crew, not very small crew, and middle distances, not very far distances. Actually, there is a market gap for that. Everyone can talk about that gap, but no one is developing a plane for that gap because may, running and maintaining a plane as well as developing a plane in multi-billion dollar investment is not okay because there's not enough gap. There's a gap, of course. Like if you uh, develop a plane like that, people will buy, but not enough people will buy because that gap of people uh, who needs to travel mid, like not far, not smaller distances at like mid-range of people, that gap is not enough for maintaining a new flight class if you can understand me. So there's a need also, there's a need, there's a way that we can develop a flight and everything is there, but maintaining a new type of flight is uh, not economical for that amount of demand because you might need 1,000 planes for that gap, but not more than that. You need 10,000 pl uh, planes gap to run a single type of plane category, but 1,000 planes per globe 
in the whole world is not enough to run a new plane type. Likewise, you have to make sure that the gap you find out has enough potential. Say for an example, there's a real, I, I'm again taking an example, uh, uh, maybe wheelchair with a specific requirement for maybe or wheelchair to be used for single arm people. So there are people who are having uh, all both legs disabled and one arm disabled. So that wheelchair should be operated with a single arm only. You can develop that thing, but how many people in Sri Lanka has both, both legs disabled and one arm disabled? that market segment might not be enough to sustain your product. So you have to make sure that you are having enough a correct market gap as well as enough market gap. That's one thing. Other one is uh, uh, the requirement of the consumers. For an example, uh, like when you are developing an electronic device, you have to go to the consumers and see whether these consumers exactly need the requirement. Uh, not, not the gap, but uh, these buttons. Say for an example, you are developing a phone and uh, uh, do you need to have these two buttons in that phone like volume button if it is needed by many people you have to implement it but you can't decide it in your own you have to work with people you have to talk with people uh, do some surveys and see whether that two buttons are actually needed sometimes you might be developing a nice really high-tech device but it's not needed say for an example in the same way same phone say i, I need a nice dial in here physical dial a note type of thing that you can increase and decrease volume. It, it's a nice addition, but if people don't need it as such, there's no point in developing it. Likewise, you have to make sure that the consumer demand is correctly met. Say, the best, best people who actually tap, tap that thing are Apple and Tesla, as I see them. So they have properly take, went to the consumers, did a huge amount of consumer research and found out exactly what consumer need then only they can develop a really nice product that the people love. Normally, what they say is, if people like your product, you can make, make a fairly good company. But if the people love your product, you can make huge amount of money. That's the difference between Apple and any other phone company. Normally, people who are uh, like using Apple products normally love that product. That's the difference. And there's another gauge which says, uh, if you are say you you have something for some product maybe phone laptop mouse keyboard whatever thing and if you when you are going to work if you forget about that thing are you coming back to collect that product say for example your spectacles if you are as blind as i am you might need to come back to uh, get that uh, spectacles because you can't work at office without it and of course for the phone now if you forget the phone you are normally coming back to the home because you can't work without the phone. Same for the laptop. But is it okay for the mouse? Not exact, right? You can work with the touchpad. So mouse is, mouse is not the essential product. So that's a gauge to say, okay, is it really needed from the consumer? Uh, say smartwatch, are you coming back to the smartwatch? Probably not. That's why the smartwatch is not a market growing as phone or laptops because smartwatch, Watch is a nice addition, but it's not essential. So that's again a gauge to see whether the consumers actually need it. So you have to do all these consumer analysis, find out the correct niche market, find out whether consumers might like your product or love your product, and then start developing. Even before you type in the specifications, you have to have all this data with you. And also the buying power. Say, uh, you might have a really nice product developed, but if your consumers can't buy that thing, there's no point developing it. So you have to have the buying power of the consumers. Again, one example is, I don't know whether you have it, there are like brain wave, uh, like sleeping uh, uh, aids, aid devices, which is perfect for all the people. They are having a big problem in sleeping. So when you put on this device, it helps you to sleep because it's generating alpha waves and everything. So you can quickly go to sleep and continue a deep sleep, which is perfect for elderly people. So most of the companies launched the brand new device to elderly population. But it didn't succeed because elderly people do need it, but most of the money to buy that. Then they launched the same product with a little different, uh, like app is different, uh, the appearance is different, but it's the exact same product for executives who want to sleep. They can sleep, but they don't have enough sleep. Now they have only four hours to sleep. They have want to sleep as much as possible within that four hours. 
And when they launched the same product to that market segment, it was a like proper success. Now Philips is dominating that market and many other inter- others are entering the market, but it's a really good success because now it is in the correct segment. People can afford money and buy that thing. Previously, when you were selling to Eldel, it was selling at $100, $200, but now it is selling at really high prices, maybe $400, because now the executives can purchase that thing. So you have to make sure that you tap on all these requirements and only after that start writing the specifications. So when you put up the project idea into a first presentation, you have to have all this data ready. Without that, you will fail. So I want to stress this because this is not enough at all. You have to always go to consumers, work with them, get their idea, but not your idea, right? You have to get their idea, their specifications, the market gap and everything, and then only enter the market, uh, like product development phase. Thank you, Mr. Kosa. That was a really lengthy and very important uh, uh, introduction on what to consider when you uh, when you gen- generate a good idea. And another question that is uh, coming from uh, students is, uh, what are the basic sources of generating project ideas? How do these ideas, uh, I mean, it's like a, a lighting a bulb in your mind. So how, how do they, uh, how, what inspires these good ideas? I said, it's again a really good question. Uh, one is the light bulb ideas. Normally, light bulb ideas are uh, core research ideas like what Einstein might have taken inside in the quantum physics and everything. Or when you are doing some research, you might get immediate new idea, then you can test on it. So most of these ideas, that light bulb type ideas, come normally to core research, where you are inventing on something. We talk, call it invention, where you are introducing something which is not available in the common global knowledge base. So it's it's a good way to start. Then you can you have to start a research type product project. That's one thing. Other one is you can get the ideas from the researcher. Say if you go to a, a researcher who is doing core research in chemistry, he might have a lot of ideas in his mind, but he doesn't have enough time to work on them. So they are not light bulb ideas, but they are sub fruits. Like the researcher might be researching on this path, but he might have small ideas in other other parts. He doesn't have enough time to go through them. So if you go to good academic or good researcher and talk with them, they might give you a large amount of really good ideas. Just he that core researcher doesn't have enough time to go with these ideas and explore them. So that's another really good way to do the research. Honestly, if you are going for either uh, core research or translation research, I would recommend going in that, that part because these people, the researchers, lecturers, uh, people who are in the industry and who have worked with those uh, aspects a long time, they know what cool ideas are, really good ideas are. So it's easier to go that way, work with the, talk with few people in the research project, research area and get idea from them. That's again, a really good way. The other way is when when you know the part, uh, when you know the uh, area that you are going to innovate. So it's not invent. When you know you want to innovate in the area, then you can develop idea. It's not a light bulb moment. You don't have any light bulb there. You know that you want to go to next generation of phone, and then you go to consumers, find out what are the pain points. Say for an example, you, you want to develop a next generation phone, you go to consumers and write down all their pain points in current phone. One of the key things that they will highlight is this is huge. So you can't put it in the pocket. The pocket is not enough and the phone is always dropping from your hand because you can't, your hand can't grab, grab this kind of large phone. But still you need a larger display because you need so much of things to do in a display. So you can come to an idea, okay, you need a foldable phone. So foldable displays, might have come like that. So foldable displays might not have generated as light bulb ideas, but they are coming from consumer need. So you know foldable phone displays needed because people that kind of uh, smaller size when you are in the pocket, but larger size when you are open, when you are working. So the innovations, not inventions, but innovations generate like that. 
So the, when you are going for a product development, normally that's how ideas come. Not because you want to you get an idea like this, but it's because you want to say another example, you want to go in the electric car industry and then you refine the idea from the consumer side and technology side and get a nice product to develop. Yes, uh, thank you very much for that explanation. And I'd also like to add something to that, actually. So uh, I remember uh, while I was studying in University of Tokyo, Japan, we were working on a project where we uh, worked on reducing the noise generated by uh, bullet trains. So uh, as a part of uh, when we had the first discussions uh, with the uh, Japan Railways company, one of the examples that they give us was uh, how they uh, how they came up with the idea of the Kingfisher uh, 500, which is one of the fastest uh, bullet trains in uh, in Japan, and uh, the the chief engineer who came up with that uh, design was a bird watcher, and uh, he was actually watching how a Kingfisher would catch a fish uh, in the water without generating a splash. So this was actually uh, when the bullet train was going uh, inside the tunnel and it generates a lot, uh, some shock waves. So he was actually implementing that idea on, uh, on the bullet train simply because he was getting that idea from nature. So I think bio-inspiration is also another way that uh, if, you, if you are really into observing nature and that kind of uh, thing, that would also, I think, help uh, you to generate good ideas. And another thing actually we also learn is that uh, when you work with different uh, sets of people as engineers, sometimes we tend to stick with engineers. Our friends are engineers and we kind of think in the same, uh, same, uh, same way. So, if, But if we go and talk with a set of doctors or a set of uh, musicians, we will look at uh, problems in a different perspective and those things might also help us to properly identify the use and needs. So that's something I think uh, we can uh, tell the students to work on to associate with different types of uh, people. So because now the innovations are not really happening at the core fields, but at the, you know, uh, at, at the interfaces of different fields. So maybe that's something to consider as well. But what are your thoughts, Mr. Kosala, on, on that? Yeah, that's actually spot on because especially uh, one of the reasons I even I forgot to mention that uh, in Sri Lankan research and development environment is when you are doing research in universities in departments, we are doing in a single department or single faculty, say doing research in engineering faculty, is, is in on my opinion it's not worth it because like you are trying to like identify a problem and develop a solution without actually consumer say if it is a medical product you have to work with the medical department or medical faculty and medical faculty should be able to work with the engineering faculty from early on from their first year second year develop them collaborate with them and on a, it's not a single it's a total education system in the Sri Lanka we have to be able to collaborate much more with other universities, other departments, say art faculty, medical faculty, and engineering faculty developing a product will be amazing. We don't have opportunity like that on, on us, like the opportunity we have is much lesser. In other countries, it's way higher. So like we can't totally rock the boat in a single, single day. So what we can do is we, we can work with uh, as uh, Dr. Zunin said, it's perfect because we have to work with other people, work with doctors, work with farmers, work with uh, nature lovers, bird watchers, uh, art, like art graduates, artists, and then find out these projects and ideas. And even when you are developing, well, we have to work with them. Honestly, what I have seen is uh, there are so much of product projects going on in the medical field. We are engineering projects, but we have never talked to no, taken a single doctor's opinion on it until we deal with the prototype. I have seen projects like that. It doesn't work like that. Your opinion about the medicine is totally different from what's actually happening in the real medical industry. So you have to go with, go to them, talk with them, go to hospital, go to a surgery. So if you are if you are developing a product which is going to a surgery room, you have to be in the surgery at least five, ten days before you can start writing down the proposal. It doesn't happen in Sri Lanka. That's why the products we are inventing are not actually matching the market. So 
uh, honestly i like a much better interaction between multiple fields to make sure that we have really good products coming out yes uh, thank you mr kosa there's another question from the student uh, one is uh, on uh, as students uh, what uh, kind of uh, res uh, what kind of product development should we focus on is it research type uh, uh, product development translational research or uh, commercializing products which is the uh, as students where what is the best way to start and uh, that depends totally on you like it's like asking me whether you would uh, uh, they want to do medical uh, medicine or engineering it's like that so if you really like research level products where you are uh, meaning to uh, like uh, staying in the lab doing research inventing something putting it into a uh, publication going into a like nobel prize then it's research project and if you are really into a kind of people's person and you are you want to Uh, make something and uh, like you like putting something into the consumer's hand and then get your uh, enjoyment there uh, and and if you are good in that uh, uh, this product development so i don't have a quick answer for that i have gone through all the three phases i have done research in all the three phases uh, probably i like transitional research because i but i'm not very good at doing core research i'm not a kind of scientist like that i don't get like crazy ideas like that i am normally getting what is available in the market and putting in available in the knowledge base and putting into the market so it probably transitional research is something i like but what i did in the practical domain is mainly product development just nothing in comparison to be better than other it's on your requirement if you normally if you are going for phd's and higher education going to be a research lecturer i would uh, think that even research project will be better for starting because you can put up more publications go for better phd's with research uh, going to uh, product development and getting a phd in that is uh, not that common right yes i i completely agree with you i think that they, that's based on your personality and your preference uh, on uh, what kind of uh, development that you need to choose and another question uh, we are getting from a student is that uh, uh, when we uh, when let's say a student is having a good idea about uh, develop, about a product idea and how can they obtain funds uh, to develop this or to commercialize this are there any uh, any sources where they can get help to develop these products if they have a good idea it's tricky like if it is a transitional research yes because transitional research means you can get that research and that research is something the companies might be interested in say for an example you develop uh, you have a new chem you get a new chemistry for a battery new battery chemistry and develop a prototype of a battery using that battery chemistry which is a transitional research you get a research from chemistry research and then develop into a prototype battery which many companies might be interested in in sri lanka excite might be interested in that and in other countries so many battery manufacturers might be interested in that so they might be finding you for this because uh, funding you is much cheaper than them doing their research with highly paid engineers but when you are going for product development funding you are, if even if your idea is really good it doesn't mean that it's aligning with the portfolio of the company that you are addressing say if you are having a really nice car manufactured or you have a like product development project going for a electric car which is really nice you have done everything perfectly and you take it to the micro but if micro is not intending to manufacture uh, or install a new vehicle line recently there's no point them funding into your research because the product development research means you have to end with the consumer product and uh, the research and development cost might be maybe uh, 10000 usd but the product actually ramping it to the bulk manufacturing and setting up the bulk manufacturing marketing cost might be 1 million 2 million usd so the cost of actually putting into market physically is sometimes 10 to 100 times sometimes 1000 times higher than the development cost because you have to do it in bulk uh, you can't put 
five cars into the market and see that it's a seasonal you have to put at least thousand cars a day into the market to make sure that it, it goes on well so that kind of money might not be available with the current current uh, customer base or current manufacturers so getting your idea to push to other companies is tricky in product development not because your product is bad but because finding out that exact match is hard so if you are thinking about product development first talk with other companies if you are thinking about electronic product development talk with orange so on uh, synergen these come to companies and see whether they have some product development that you can contribute into that way it's way easier to join into a already pipeline product because the companies have pipeline like again if i go to micro they might have a electric car in the uh, in the in their product pipeline in 2030 and another engine car in 2025 likewise so you have you can tap into their pipeline and get the product that they are intended to market uh, rather than going in the other way around I don't know, that's my idea because like when you are developing a product it's not a new idea it's not like you are you're inventing something which is not available in the whole world you are developing a phone but there are a thousand other phone brands in the market so pushing your idea to other companies might not be that easy right uh, so another question uh, that we are getting is uh, how to determine whether uh, my idea is marketable? Uh, Mr. Kosal, I think you're... <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking about thinking that it's the, it's the product development you are thinking about. So to make sure that uh, your product is marketable, the question is whether your product should be profitable, right? You can market at a, like a low lower price and sell something but your product should be profitable to the company as a whole production line for that uh, one thing is consumer research initially you have to do the consumer research find out how much you can sell what's the cost you can sell and whether there's enough market gap whether your consumer segment that you selected actually has potential to purchase and uh, how you can compete with other companies and uh, how other companies are growing if it is a really rapidly growing uh, industry or stagnating industry uh, how your growth of the product is compared compared to other companies so that's the most trickiest question ever in the product market uh, like if if, uh, if you can determine whether your product is profitable in the market that's the hardest thing to know like because <laughs> that's the start of everything so i don't have a direct one sentence answer but it's something we should go with the market research. You have to do a proper market research and find out whether you can make the product. And something I forgot to mention in my initial talk with uh, this success of the product, the biggest success factor is not the product quality, pricing, market gap or anything, it's the time. The time that you launch into the market. Uh, for an example, if Vega could put up their car two years, three years before that, they should be a huge hit like everyone should be putting their money on that like because uh, it was before tesla then like three four years before uh, but at, at the time that vega went to the car supercar tesla had launched their own supercar with much higher specification uh, still the vega will have really good market but still the, that there's a huge difference between that three years and youtube is not the youtube you know like that's the second biggest engine search engine in the world and you are having so much of videos going through there they were not the best first first to market they are a company exactly like youtube in the market but they launched their product three years before the data bandwidth is enough so they they uh, invest a huge amount of money on data servers and everything and launched their product and it was an utter failure youtube didn't do anything different they are they enter to the market and launch the product right with the broadband connections then it was a really good success likewise you have to make sure that timing is correct same for electric cars phones laptop anything your timing is the best uh, uh, selection or best factor of success okay uh, thank you very much uh, mr kosala for uh, for answering all the questions that uh, students uh, asked during this discussion session. 
So I think uh, with that, uh, we are uh, running out of time. And uh, while thanking you once again uh, for your presence on this Saturday, uh, thank you for uh, deciding to uh, spend it with uh, our students and, uh, uh, and sharing your years of experience with them. Uh, and I really, really appreciate it uh, from the university uh, for your efforts to uh, uh, bring something to the students uh, who are actually interested in developing new products. So I'd like to uh, hand over the meeting back to uh, Aditya. Um, Aditya, over to you. Thank you. And thank you very much uh, for having me for this discussion. It's uh, happy to share my thoughts with you.